This just in. A student has just spotted a ferocious bear outside of Secobeck. Please stay alert. If you see him, back away slowly and notify campus police immediately. You have been warned. Hey guys, I'm Felicia and we're here with another dorm room science episode. Today we're going to be talking about Roger Sperry who won the Nobel Prize in medicine in 1981 for his discoveries concerning the functioning of the brain hemispheres. Before Sperry's research, it was previously thought that sectioning the corpus callosum produced no definite behavioral effects. However, while at the California Institute of Technology, Roger Sperry and Michael Gazaniga showed that if the two hemispheres of the brain are separated by severing the corpus callosum, the transfer of information between the two hemispheres stops and the coexistence of two functionally different brains can be demonstrated. Sperry started this investigation with cats and monkeys, but later extended it to epileptic patients whose hemispheres had been surgically separated in order to gain some control over epileptic seizures. It was with these patients that he was able to show that a conscious mind exists in each hemisphere. The left hemisphere is analytical and dominant in speech and all activities involving language and arithmetic. The right hemisphere is oriented with creativity and superior to the left hemisphere in spatial comprehension. By devising ways of communicating with each hemisphere, Sperry could show that each hemisphere is, to quote him, indeed a conscious system in its own right. Both the left and right hemisphere may be conscious simultaneously in different, even in mutually conflicting, mental experiences that run along in parallel. Now Aaron Price will give us a deeper look into the split brain procedure. Hey guys, I'm Aaron Price and I'm here on Dorm Room Science to talk to you about split brain procedures. You might be wondering, what does split brain mean? <laughs> split brain refers to the separation of the two hemispheres of the brain by severing the corpus callosum. Patients who had epilepsy had this procedure done to alleviate the seizures that they had due to excessive nerve signaling in the brain. Once the connection was severed between both halves of the brain, the seizures were alleviated. Roger Sperry started experimenting in the 1960s on patients who had had this procedure done and found that they functioned normally for the most part except for certain tasks that they had a difficult time with. Simple tasks that you might not expect. And he found later on that these differences in their functioning were due to functional specialization of each hemisphere of the brain. Your right hemisphere specializes with like visual and audio input whereas the left hemisphere of the brain function or specializes in language production. So these differences became evident after his experimentation. And today we're going to take an in-depth look at split brain patients and the procedures that they might go through in a lab with Mike Gazaniga and Joe. So to promote understanding of the split brain procedures, your right side of your body is connected to the left hemisphere of your brain, while the left side of your body is connected to the right hemisphere of your brain. In the first experimental procedure of the day, Joe is asked to draw two separate pictures, one with each hand at the same time, to show whether or not this task was doable. And in normal patients, people without split brain, would not be able to draw either one of the shapes correctly because the two hemispheres are communicating. However, patient Joe was able to clearly separate out these two shapes and draw them at the same time, even though they're different, showing that the two hemispheres of his brain are not connected, almost as if he has two separate brains. In the second experimental procedure of the day, Mike Gazaniga was looking to see if there was any specialization of the hemispheres of the brain. To test this, patient Joe was asked to look at a computer screen, and words appeared to either the right side or the left side of the computer screen. The words that appeared on the right side of the screen were processed by the left hemisphere, and the words that appeared on the left side of the screen were processed by the right hemisphere. 
When the word phone appeared on the left side of the computer screen, Joe claimed that he did not see the word, but when asked to draw a picture of the word, he was able to do so. When words flashed to the right side of the screen, he was immediately able to vocalize the word because they were processed by the left side of the brain, indicating that language does specialize in the left hemisphere of the brain. The third task of the day also focused on showing differences between the two functions of the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. So again, Joe is presented with words flashed on a computer screen, but this time two words were flashed at the same time. The word bell was flashed to the right side of the brain, while the word music was flashed to the left side of the brain. When presented with a photo of four pictures depicting musical instruments, Joe pointed to the picture of bells with his left hand. When asked why, he explained that he had heard bells outside on his way into the experiment. In reality, his right brain had processed the word bell, but was unable to communicate this to the left side of the brain. The left hemisphere, when left to its own devices, will try to explain any behavior, so it came up with a new ex explanation about the bells outside of the experiment. Cool, right? In conclusion, Roger Sperry's discoveries in physiology provided important insight on the different functions of each brain hemisphere. This information helps us understand how communication between the brain hemispheres helps us distinguish and recognize objects in our visual fields. Thanks again, Mike and Joe, for helping us better understand split brain procedures. I'm Erin Price. And I'm Felicia Hamm. And we'll see you on another episode of Dorm Room Science. Bye! Bye. The split brain procedure is def is <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> so <frustrating. laughs> Just a second. Okay. And I was so unorganized, I was like, <laughs> I would have to do this one again. You might ask, what is a split brain procedure? So my first procedure is I can't decide. <laughs> I didn't know how long to do that face for. And go. Hey guys. And okay, no. <laughs> but I could. Sean's trying to be on TV. Yes, put me in this. I'm the credits or something. That's my globe. I made this. It took me like three hours. Probably would have only taken me one. And well. <laughs> Psychology major. I'm leaving. Thank you. We know everything. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> hey, feel feel free to walk upstairs and hang out my apartment. Because uh -huh. I can't take more than like ten minutes of her, and you've been here for like thirty. So props. You love oh, me. Thanks. Of course.